We've been singing about open the eyes of my heart, and I want my heart to be before the Lord. And I'd have to come to you this morning and say it's my utmost at the core desire that my heart would be absolutely fully alive with God. And that's what I want, not just something that's pulsating on the outside, but something that changes me on the inside, something that moves me, that directs my thoughts, that in, inter, entertains my, my actions, that, that affects my speech, everything, something that infuses me to the core and makes my heart become fully alive. Yet I let my thoughts get the best of me. So I start chasing all my thoughts and all my best made plans, and all of my dreams, and all of my goals, and, and then I get fearful, uh, and then I seem to start just reacting to life, you know, uh, all my circumstances, this happens, and I turn, and I, I move this, and uh, this happens, or, or I get worried about what everybody else is thinking, you know, uh, and, and so I worry about every, everything else, and I'm, I'm a, impacted by my circumstances, or or maybe I just get overwhelmed by my emotions, and I just get paralyzed, and I just don't do anything, or, 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 or maybe I just ignore them altogether. So what happens? If you're like me, then we start drifting off into the past, the good old days. We start thinking about where there was a better place, or a better time, where things were obviously perfect because we forget all the bad details, uh, and, and we just, we just kind of think about that, or we look forward, and we think about the future, and that if everybody would just go on the same page as me, because I've got it all figured out, then life would just be better, and so I'm just trying to get you on my same page, I'm trying to control things, I'm trying to do all, all of that, or I just get stuck, I just don't do anything, I just start, you know, it's, oh, it's Monday again, no, it's, it's, it's next year again, and, and we just, you know, we just do life, and you go, I mean, and we just kind of look back. How can we break that cycle? Because we're all faced with it. We're all uh, pushed into it. Well, I believe that the Spirit of God leads us this morning to consider our hearts. To look at our, the condition of our hearts. Uh, and to see, and in fact, that's the thing that will make all the difference in how you live today and tomorrow and how you function uh, in, in this world is the condition of your heart. Now, Jesus actually spent some time, and he shared a very well-known parable. Uh, it's called the parable of the sower. It's called the parable of the souls, and, and all these different things. Uh, and in Jesus, and what he was doing was trying to, uh, I think, give us some insight, maybe, uh, to some spreading of the gospel and him sharing the word. Now, it's recorded in Matthew and Mark uh, and Luke, uh, and or, and so you, you get several different examples of that. But one of the things with this parable is Jesus was kind of asking you, almost like we were doing singing a while ago. He's, he's asking us, he's fixing to share a very simple, well-known, you can look up and see everything in this story, but it's got a little mystery to it. Why, why is the mystery? Because he wanted those who would actually lean in and say, I want that. I don't just agree that that would look a good heart would look good on you. I go, I want that for myself. That's what Jesus was looking for. And he said in this parable, he said, I'm going to share the truth. And there are going to be different conditions of the heart of people that it lands on. And so it's going to be received totally different. It's going to be received totally different. And that's what we're coming back uh, and, and looking at some of these items. I want to read you the parable from Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 5, Luke chapter 8, starting in verse 5, it says, A sower went out to sow his seed. Now, what they would have been doing, they would have been on the beach at this time uh, because there were so many crowds. Jesus was pushed off the shore and he was teaching from a boat just to kind of use the acoustics and the atmosphere. But they would have looked over and they would have seen all these fields. They would have walked through these fields because it was a very agriculture society. And so they would have seen and go, Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. And so a sower sows. A seed and what what they would have gotten the picture of was somebody with a, a, a bag of seed uh, and just this perfect rhythm of, of casting out seed uh, casting out seed so a sower sows the seed some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot the birds of the air devoured it some fell on the rock and grew up and withered away because it had no moisture some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it some fell into good soil 
and grew and yielded a hundredfold. And he, he said these things, don't miss this part. He said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Throughout this, Jesus keeps coming back. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. What Jesus is doing in the tense of this verb of hear is this ongoing, repetitive welcoming going, do you want it? I mean, no, not do you agree with it, don't, not do you agree it would look good on somebody else, but do you want that for your own? Do you want a heart that's fully alive? He's going, then ask. <laughs> then, then ask, then draw in close and, and, and ask. And so of all these people that were hearing this story, and everybody's going, yeah, I get it, it's about agriculture. I get it, it's about agriculture. And Jesus is going, Okay, this is a simile. Yes, I'm using agriculture, something you're very familiar with, but there's some mystery. Uh, and the Old Testament and the prophets have been pointing to this time over and over and over. And Jesus was going, I'm right here, Messiah, telling you, showing you how to have a heart that's fully alive. Do you want it? Even if it looks different than you think. Even if it's uh, out, out of what you're accustomed to. Do you want it? And he stops. And the crowd are like, I came here to see some, you know, really cool stuff. <laughs> I said, I came, you know, that, like that, that girl that got healed or that guy, you know, spoken word that got healed. Now, that was cool. That's what I came to see, you know, some miracles type stuff. Or, uh, and, and Jesus was probably healing uh, and doing some physical things uh, out, there, out, out there. And so I, I'm, I'm sure just being around Jesus, and I mean, he was magnetic and all these different things. I'm sure that people knew people, and it was just becoming this huge crowd, and they wanted to see. But it was only the disciples who decided to lean in close to Jesus and go, this is a great story. What's me? You know, I want what you were saying in my core. I don't want just a, a good story. I, I want you, God, so... Tell us what it means. Well, that's what Jesus begins to do. And later on in the chapter, in verse 10, he says this. So I tell you, it's, it's the secrets of the kingdom. Make sure I'm on the right spot. Now the parable is this, verse 11. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So what he was, was he saying? I want it to be very clear. It's the word of God. Okay. When he's talking about the seed, uh, usually when we talk about the gospel and you hear the word gospel and we throw it around in different li things like this, broadly, the gospel is the word of God. In this specific instance, Jesus is, is honing down and saying, I'm teaching and showing how to Follow Jesus onto salvation. And so he's specifically talking about the redemption story here. He's specifically talking about the redemption story, the, the gospel story. Now, I don't want to run past this. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, the way of salvation. Uh, this is the key to connecting with God. This is the key to having your heart released and be fully alive. So I don't want to run past this. What is the gospel story? Now, I decided just to go back to maybe do an acrostic of the word gospel, uh, just to kind of let it soak into us and remind us. I hope you notice every week, regardless of what I'm preaching and teaching on, I come back to the gospel story because that's the main thing. You got to know the main thing or you miss life. And so I, I constantly come back and I'm constantly pushing us to, to know the gospel, just using the gospel as, as an acrostic. What, what is the gospel story that leads us to salvation? Well, the good news is you can have a heart that's fully alive. This is not just an infomercial, though. <laughs> I mean, this is not, okay, you know, do this, call here. Uh, I mean, this is God coming towards us because of his great love for us. You can have a heart that's fully alive. Well, what's the problem? Our sin separates us from holy God. Yes, we get it when we're talking about you know, our words, our actions, our, our thoughts that are unholy before God. But it's even where you've tried to be good enough and that doesn't measure up to God's good, holy perfection. It's all those things together. And what those deserve is separation from holy God. 
It deserves His judgment. It deserves physical and spiritual death. So ask, what's the solution? It's, it's truly the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus absorbed the divine punishment for our sin by living a sinless life, sacrificing His life on the cross, and then demonstrating His supernatural divinity by rising again. Are you letting this soak into you? I mean, even if you know this, even if you've responded to this in the past, when you allow this to penetrate you, it allows your heart to become fully alive. So what's the promise? Well, God extends His grace to those who by faith believe in Jesus Christ and receive it for their own. So this is not just something that's out there that I can be around. It's not just something that I can hear and agree with, but it's something that I need to leverage my life on. It's something I, you can tell I believe it by how I live. I, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's leveraging your life on the Lord. And so there's this eternity uh, in the balance for you and I. It's, it's not just can you be fully alive today. Eternity is in the balance. And so when I trust in Jesus, I'm actually adopted in the family of God. Isn't that great? I'm an heir to the gospel. And he seals me with the Spirit. He doesn't just say, okay, you've taken care of that. Good luck. I'll see you when this life is done. No, he deposits his Spirit within me to guide and walk with me. I don't have to do this world alone. And the L just reminds me that the rest of life, really, is about loving him back with good works. And turning around as a responsibility of owning the gospel, I've got to share that beautiful good news to others. Now, something that I did not want us to miss, it's God's kindness. It's his kindness that leads me to repentance. It's his kindness, his love towards me that goes, he's holy in perfection, I am not, and yet he still reaches out to make a way for me to connect with him. It's his kindness that makes me go, okay, I'm going to say no to sin and no to self, and I'm going to say yes to God. Even though I can't physically see him, I'm putting my faith and my trust in him. That's, that's what repentance is, is turning away from sin and turning to him. Who, who am I turning towards? Towards God. My faith, my trust are in him. And then he promises salvation, eternal security. What's my response to all of that? Oh, you should start seeing a transformed change in me. Ever increasingly, you should see some change in how I act, what I say, how I think. If I'm letting the gospel invade who I am, it's going to transform me, 2 Corinthians 3, 18, more and more and more into the image of Christ until he comes back. Why, is he, why didn't he just fix that all, all you know, real quickly? Because in that process of becoming more and more like Christ, he's, he's, he's beckoning my heart to draw in more to him. He's also letting those around me go, it's not about being perfect, it's not about the, the works, it's about him transforming my life to be more like him so I can share the story some more. He could rip open the sky right now and tell us all, and we would all hit the floor. But he wants to use people like you and me that go, Here's my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart and then just grabbing onto that and taking it and letting it fuse into my soul and living that out. That's what he wants. So you understand, we've got to know what he's talking about, the gospel story. It's the good news, but we have an obstacle and he's, he's provided the way and he extends a promise and you can have eternity set in the balance and then you can turn around and find that your heart was wired to know him to love him and then love others like he loved you. That's the gospel story. So if we go back to verse 11, he says, So the seed is the word of God, and the ones that are along the path are those who have heard. Again, the, the beautiful word of God he's, he's talking about, this gospel story, he's sharing to all that have different uh, conditions of the heart. And so it's not the presentation that's the focus here. It's the condition of the soil, the condition of the heart that makes that gospel take fruit and explode or just fall onto hard places and die. So we started talking about this. We started wanting to, to lean in a little bit 
uh, and, and looking at the conditions of the soil that Jesus was talking about. And he begins in verse 12 and he says, the ones along the path are those who have heard. Now when he was talking about a, a path, this would have been a trampled down footpath. Uh, in Israel, there were uh, basically dividers that you could walk through the countryside that were right at public right-of-ways. You could walk on them. There were no fences. You weren't having to ask permission. If you wanted to go to your house, you could cut through. Just don't step on the plants. There are these public right-of-ways. Obviously, because of the traffic, they were trampled down. They were hard. They were dry. And so if seed fell on that, even if it's a good seed, what's going to happen? It's not going to penetrate. Why? Because it's hard. And we talked about last week, have you ever either been or know somebody that is like talking through a brick wall? I mean, you, you say something, they're like, uh, and it's like, I mean, it just falls flat. There are people that ha are hard-hearted towards the gospel. In fact, one of the things that we did as an offering last week, we wrote down people that God brought to mind. That, that we knew, whether it was even ourselves or others, that were hard-hearted towards the gospel. And there's columns. They can have the truth right in front of them, and for whatever reason, they say no. Why? Because the enemy is actively trying to get that beautiful seed of the gospel from sinking down into your soul and changing you. And he will do anything and everything to take that away. That's what this parable is telling us about this, this hard ground, this hard soul area. John MacArthur actually says, The heart is a thoroughfare crossed by the mixed multitude of iniquities that continually traverse it. It's not fenced. So it's like expo it lies exposed to all the evil stomping of everything wicked that comes along. If it is never plowed by conviction or cultivated with any kind of self-searching, self-examination, contrition, honest assessment, or guild, or true repentance, the heart will be hardened against the sweet beckoning of grace. Did you get that? So you can say no to the gospel long enough that you can hear the truth and it can be beautiful and it can be freedom filled and it can set you free and you can say no long enough that it just bounces off of you and has no impact. Oh, don't be that way. It's, it's like a warning sign to us. Now, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy for us to go, yeah, I know that person. I mean, I mean usually, you know, they're, they're the ones, and we talked about it last week, I mean, they're like, woo! going to hell come join the party and they're like making fun of it those are easy to see but there are, are many people around us many good people that are just saying no to the beautiful gospel story and they'll have the same final end the enemy's coming to just snatch it away for whatever reason this morning, I want to spend some time talking about a different soul. Jesus goes on, and he says, And the ones on the rock, who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but they have no root. They believe it for a while, and in time of testing, they fall away. Now remember, Jesus is talking about different conditions of the heart. There are, and you and I have been there, and we've got to keep and warn ourselves to keep from being that. There are times that, that we have our heart hard to the gospel. We can sing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, and our eyes, minds are, are a million miles away because we're just not into it. And God's going, no, you've, you've got to want it. I mean, do, do you want heart change? I mean, you've got to press into it. And yeah, there's distractions. And yeah, the enemy's after you. And yeah, there's all this thing. But do you want it? And he goes on and he says there's a different type of soul. Now, usually when we see pictures of this, we would probably see a, a, a soul or a field that had a lot of rocks in it. And, and really, that's not an accurate picture of what Jesus would be describing here. Um, it, it helps with the visual, but it's, it's really not an accurate picture of what Jesus would be describing. Jesus would have pointed to a, a field, and in that area there was a lot of limestone slate, a big, long slate uh, limestone. One, it would get really hot, uh, and it would heat things up. 
but a, any self-respecting farmer would clean all the rocks out of their field. And so whatever it took, whatever the condition that they could physically see, they're going to clean all of the rocks out of their field before they plow. Then they plow thinking that it's all good, and they plant, again, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the presentation. Then they plant, but what they find initially, there's some in certain areas of these plants that just like, boom, they just sprout up. And, and, and initially, you would look on that and go, wow, I mean, this is going to be a bumper crop year. But what is happening, there's some layers of rock underneath. And as the roots try to take hold and can't, it forces growth up. Then when the heat comes and heats up the rock, when the weather changes, that's the first place to die. It's below the surface that the heart is hard. That's a challenge to us this morning. I kind of lean into that. It's below the surface there that the heart is hard. I mean, it's the polar opposite at first. I mean, those that receive the seed of the gospel that are along the path, those that are hard heart, I mean, it's obvious. They just like, I don't care. I'm going to start on the next thing. Boom, it's hard heart. No, no, No response. But there are those, God was saying, that actually will go, well, that sounds good. It may even initially bring some relief. They may accept it with joy. How about... Have you seen someone that ha- ha- responds with like a, 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 an emotional type experience? I mean, like, it was just beautiful. I mean, the music moved me, this moved me, and, and just when it gets time, I'm just like, boom. I, I'm just like, I was just there. I mean, I just emotionally was drawn down to, to respond. And there's nothing, you know, at the, at the base of that wrong at that. But if that's all your, your, your roots are grown on, are you going to survive it? Oh, this is telling us to, to warn against that, to, to warn against really a superficial experience. I mean, whether it's a, a, a warm emotion, maybe it's fear. How many of us have in the past have had somebody stand over the top of you and go, man, if you don't do this, you're going to hell. And you're like, dude, I'm in. You know, I'm, I'm in. If you want to scare, you know, and, 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 and this just, this text warns us against that. Uh, I mean, God's not trying to scare us in. He could if he wanted. Maybe we've seen it where we're talking about just a a crowd, a movement goes. Maybe you were at youth camp or something like that. Everybody went, you you, you went. Or or maybe it was a response to disaster. How many people have gone through this crazy disaster, uh, you know, a, a split up, a breakup, a loss of someone, a loss of a baby or something like that, and they're just broken and they come before, I just need some relief, I need someone to help. And, and so they're tender towards change. And yes, the gospel story could change them. Yeah, it's just received on this superficial type level. Maybe they want the benefits. How many people have gone, if you can heal me, if you can change me, boom, I'm in. And, and so, but it, but if, if you looked at the core of who they are, and what's so crazy is we can't see these things. It kind of makes us go, it might, to me, it makes me second guess everything. I mean, doesn't you? I mean, I'm like, dude, <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, uh, it, we're looking for the benefits or, 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 or leaning towards belonging or being accepted. Maybe it's even a life stage. How many students have I seen in the past that go to church and, and lean into God in junior high and high school, and once they go off, they're gone? Why? Because they look at it as just a stage of life, no different than being in the 10th grade. When the pressure comes, when they're testing and and understand what Jesus was saying, he said, when? I mean, yeah, your thoughts are going to cave in on you. Yeah, their circumstances are going to cave in on you. Yeah, your feelings are going to cave on you. Sometime. Maybe right now. Maybe today. So how do you respond? If your heart is not rooted in Christ, there are some that just deny that moment and walk away. I 
Again, my response to this is scary. But I find comfort in this. The just judge of God knows the heart. He knows the heart. And I don't have to go back and I don't have to be the one who weighs it and go, whoo, you know, they're in. No, the just judge of God is the only one that knows. And what's scary is this is below the surface. Is Christ your prize? You know, I wonder, even in the next chapter of Luke, when they were sitting out in the fields and people were coming to hear the word of Jesus and there were over, could have been 25, 30,000 people there and Jesus was going, feed them. And he miraculously created something out of nothing. And he fed the whole crowd and people were like, yes. You know, he's feeding us, he's making us well, he speaks truth, let's get in on this. And the next day, they're even showing up for breakfast. I mean, they are just ready, they are just ready. I wonder if this parable came back to them and went, you know, but how many people really want him? Looking at it from our perspective, I wonder what they thought after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What did they think of Judas? They thought he was one of them. He talked like them. He moved like them. He went on mission trips with them. He was around Jesus with them. He was the one in charge of the money. He was trusted. He was valued. He was one that was sent out two by two with others. He was one that physically was given the gift of being with Jesus on earth. And yet the end shows us that he was in it for personal gain. A few coins which he threw away and his life. The Apostle Paul tells us that you can know you are truly reconciled to God if Colossians 1.23 you continue in faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard. So it's kind of heavy. Let us kind of see where we can unpack this and, and let it fall on us. So how can we deal with shallow type faith tendencies towards the gospel? Whether it's other people that we're sharing with, or, or whether it's even our own. Can I just encourage you to daily act on your faith? I mean, that's, that's, that's leaning into the, God, to the Word uh, and, and, and reading for yourself. That's, that's going to God in, in prayer. If you, want, if you want to have a heart rooted in the gospel, keep going back. Keep going back. Act on faith. Could you read this with me? Hebrews eleven six. 6. Come on. And without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. See, faith is more than just, okay, I'm agreeing with that. Faith is more than just, I believe in those facts. Faith is more than I'm just around, around it. Faith is going, I'm leveraging my life on it. Whether you do or not, I'm, I'm leveraging my life on it. So how can we, we push aside shallow-hearted tendencies? I mean, that may be even someone that you know that has heard the gospel and they seem tender towards it. Grab them and walk them along with you. Encourage them uh, to, to, to grow it deep. How else? You and I need to constantly share the gospel. Oh, that God would put it on the tip of our tongue to constantly come back to, if you know Christ, to your story, then it just rolls off of your lips. Oh, yeah, and this is because of God saved me. And I mean, that it would roll off of my lips so that someone who is listening to my conversation could find and know Christ for themselves. That's why we constantly need to be saying it. And we constantly, the only way that you know the heart condition of someone around you is just to ask and share. I mean, that's really kind of the point of this gospel. I mean, I mean of this parable story, that you and I that know him, would be grabbing that gospel story and be continually sharing it. And yes, is some of it going to, against some hard hearts? It is. 
not my job, though. It's my job to sow. And is some going to fall against some that are going to shallowly grab that on for just a little? It is. It's not my job. My job is to continually share that gospel story. And as I do, it's going to take root more in me. Come on, say this. Matthew, the Great Commission with me? Come on. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Maybe someone just needed to hear that again. You're not alone. He knows you. If you're his, he's with you always. Oh, just keep coming back to the gospel. See, it's not just for somebody else. As I continue to allow that truth to wash over me, even by sharing it, even by making it a priority, it changes me from the inside out. It reminds me to be grateful and gracious and just look at the world differently. Just constantly share the gospel. For some, we need to come back and just be honest and count the cost of believing. You know, the gospel could cost you a relationship. It could cost you a, a job promotion. It could cost you something. There is a cost. That's why Jesus said to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. There is going to be some pushback against the gospel. Why? Because this world will call it silly and stupid and fleeting. And criticize the heart that's fully alive. Luke 14, 27, 28. Would you read it with me? Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Uh, uh, this is like a, a, a message to us. Don't, don't just grab on these superficial things, but go ahead and allow it to saturate all who we are. And, and the last reminder, that we would just be accountable with other believers to grow, to keep growing. Too many people see their age as a quality that I must be spiritually growing. And I've seen some that are very well advanced in age that might be at the beginning place of, of, of spiritual maturity. There is no shortcut to spending time in the presence of God yourself and drawing close to God yourself. So be accountable to grow. What's the best way to do that? Grab someone or someones around you and give them permission to speak truth into your life. Yes, encourage me. Yes, let's read verses together. But also call me out. When you see me chasing after something or talking the wrong way or leaning on something wrong, I mean, call me out. Why? Because I want my heart to be alive in Christ, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be shallow-hearted. That's why Jesus said in John 50, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. You'll see evidence. Read that last part with me. For apart from me, you can do nothing. nothing of eternal value. We may get praise and admiration and respect from this world, but if you want it to count, be connected to Christ. So it comes to this. Would you commit to pray this week for those who have demonstrated a shallow, rooted faith in the gospel? Maybe God has given you a tenderness towards someone like this, and you need to, to speak. You need to help cultivate. You may need to water. You may need to encourage that God would use you to help someone be encouraged in Christ. The person with shallow-rooted faith practices a convenient faith. When it's convenient, I'll do it. But what is scary 
is they may be resting their eternal security on something that's false. How will we know? When you're tested, are they going to say yes to Christ? Or like Judas say, no. There's some underlying current that you and I couldn't see. But there was never faith and trust in Christ. heart that's fully alive with the gospel story is fully alive. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for sharing of your word and this truth. God, I just uh, confess that uh, it's easy to get distracted by and, and looking at the condition of even others' hearts over our own. I, pr I pray that you would give us this moment that we would look at our own heart and our own tendency and our own con the own condition of our, our heart towards uh, not just receiving the gospel, but responding to the gospel story daily and moment uh, and, and allowing it to fuse uh, and transform who I am uh, and to the point of where I live from that perspective. God, I want my heart to be fully alive. I pray that for each person in the room. God, if there is something that the enemy has tossed out that's being a distraction, whether it's something from the past, whether it's disbelief, whether it's, it's doubts, whether it's fear, God, I pray that you would break those down and allow your Holy Spirit to beckon them this morning to salvation. God, I pray for that person that's been around the gospel but has never made it their own, that has never accepted you as Lord and Savior, renounced their sin, put their faith in you, received your grace gift of eternal salvation to change them that they can draw close in relationship with you. I pray for those that we know in our heart of hearts that maybe we've seen a, a shallow tendency faith. God, I pray that you would continue to draw them closer to you, that it would not be hidden, superficial type things, but that it would be solid and sure in you. You are the one that set us, sets us free. I pray for these that are on the list that we've said have hard hearts. God, I pray that you would break down the the condition of their hearts, that you would give them something new, that you would wake them, awaken them to the, the beauty found in you. Would you transform them for your glory? Would they be another uh, life change story that people could point back to? And uh, people thought they were counted out or they'd given up, but you changed them. I pray the same for those that maybe responded to the gospel, but they walked away, God. If there's somebody that you bring to mind, uh, if it's a believer today, I pray that you would have us call them and contact them even this week and to speak the word of truth over them and beckon them towards your grace. God, we need you. And this parable just reminds us of how dependent we are and your finished good work of the death, burial, and resurrection for us to know life and to live life to the fullest. I would pray that over each person here. God, we need you. It's in Jesus' name that we would agree. Amen. Just for one moment, real quickly, maybe you know somebody that you go, I, I'm, I'm convinced that they maybe have a shallow faith gospel. If It may be you put your own initials. I'm going to invite you as Bobby sings this over to, to grab one of these pages uh, in the offering plates up front. And would you just put the initials, the first and last initials of someone, whether it's yourself or others, that you know they, they fit into this category.